let's review the constant acceleration lab. We had three graphs in the constant acceleration lab, position versus time. Here I have position in centimeters, time in dots representing one fifteenth of a second from the spark timer, uh, velocity in centimeters per dot versus time, and acceleration versus time. Uh, similar to what you found, uh, the relationships between these graphs are something you need to know. Uh, when you go from position to velocity, you need to know you take the slope. When you go from velocity to acceleration, you need to know you take the slope. Uh, one way of coming up with that is looking at the units. Slope is the y divided by the x, centimeters over dots, centimeters over dots. Centimeters over dots divided by dots gives you centimeter per dot per dot or centimeter per dot squared. And so the units are a clue that it's the slope. So let's do that. We should be able to take the slope anywhere along this line and it should correspond pretty well with what the velocity is. So I've drawn a tangent to about t equal 9 seconds. So the slope of this tangent line should be our velocity at t equal 9 seconds below here. And so let's pick a couple of points. Uh, here at time 6, it's at about 15. And so we have a point at 6 and 15. And then up here at time 12, we're at about 65. And so you should know how to take a slope. It's the change in y, 65 minus 15. And let's put our units there, centimeters over 12 minus 6, the change in x. Those are dots. And that comes out to about 8.3 centimeter per dot. And if we look here at t equal 9, and we go over, oh, it's about... 9 centimeters per dot. That's not bad. It's hard to draw a tangent exactly to a particular point. If you were that close in the lab, you did a pretty good uh, job on it. Now let's take the slope of the velocity graph. Since it's a constant slope, that'll be a lot easier. Let's pick this point here at t equal 10 and, and also at t equal 0. It does go through 0, 0. Yours may not have in the lab. That's okay. And so we have 0, 0 for a point and 10, 10 for a point. And so the slope, which you could do this in your head, but let's go ahead. And so it's the change in y over the change in x. And our y coordinate is centimeter per dot. And our x co coordinate is in dots. And so the slope comes out to 1 centimeter per dot per dot, or if you like, centimeter per dot squared. And you can see that is the acceleration at that point. Uh, if you got the slope at a bunch of different points and then graphed it, it would look like this. You did not have to do that in the lab. You could just take the slope of your line and draw a horizontal line here at the acceleration graph. Uh, you also need to know how to go from an acceleration graph up to a velocity graph. And that is what's often called the area under the curve. It's really the area between the curve and the x-axis. And so let's pick here at t equal 10. I have a rectangle. And so the area is the height, which is 1 centimeter per dot squared. And then the width is 10 dots, and then the change in velocity then is 10 centimeter per dot. Again, the units are a clue. Area is a multiplication process. I multiply the units of the y-axis time the, times the units of the x-axis, and I get the units of velocity centimeter per dot. And so at t equal 10, yeah, we were at 10 centimeters per dot. Uh, so that works. Uh, technically, this is not the velocity. It's the change in velocity. Uh, since our velocity started at 0, our velocity at 10 is 10 centimeters per dot. 
if we had some initial velocity that was non-zero, we would have to be given that before we could determine the actual velocity at that point. If we go from velocity to position, it is also the area. And so let's draw a line at t equal 10. And now we have the area of a triangle. And so you should know that is 1 half the base. And the base is 10 dots times the height, which is 10 centimeters per dot. And again, the units are a clue that the area has got to be my position. And so at t equal 10, I am at 50 centimeters. Again, the area is the change in position. If the graph started out at 10 or 20 and went up, I would have to add that on to get the actual position. And so the initial condition uh, has to be given when you're doing an area relationship. Uh, this would be a good relationship to explain for the conclusion of the lab. And so when you're writing your conclusion, you might review this. I need to uh, have you put it down in your own words. It's okay to have a sketch in the conclusion, but you need to write out these relationships and state them clearly.